In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and explain this complex NFT thing in five minutes. But before I get into it, one thing I need from you is to apply a little bit of liberal pressure to that subscribe button. If you like up to the minute financial advice that's current and relevant, go ahead and hit that subscribe button now. NFTs are everywhere, right? There's some picture of some skunk or some, you know, half Lego slash half animal thing going on and all kinds of stuff is going on. So there's some pop tart and some cat worth millions of dollars and pictures of all type of animals and cartoons are going for millions of dollars, right? You want to get in on the action? Well, let me explain NFTs real quick. Fungible and non-fungible. First of all, non-fungible is anything that cannot be exchanged or replicate because it is unique. So take for example, something non-fungible like the Mona Lisa, created by Leonardo da Vinci in the 1500s. A couple of points about the Mona Lisa. It's authentic, it's original, it can't be replicated, it cannot be replaced, it cannot be copied. Of course, you can copy it, because there are people who copy it, physically copy it, but you can never get the uniqueness of what that painting is, or quite frankly, the value of it. Then you've got a painting like the Salvador Mundi. So you've got the same painter, same time period, but they're completely different art pieces altogether. They're unique enough that they can't be interchanged. You can't change the name and stick it on the walls and have it be the exact same. Two very different paintings. They're unique and they're non-fungible. Means they're not interchangeable. They're both worth hundreds of millions of dollars because of their uniqueness by the painter. But they can both be owned by a specific individual or a corporation or a company or a museum, making them very, very different. Now let's go to the fungies or the fungible. It can be exchanged for one another. So if I take out a dollar, I could take out another dollar. They're equal value and can be interchanged. Although they have different serial numbers, one dollar here is gonna be able to buy the same item and another dollar there, exact same thing. There's no uniqueness. It can be replicated and copied legally. It can be done illegally. Yes, you can copy dollars and all that, but still your fungies might get you into trouble with the law. So you take one dollar, one penny, one nickel, one dime, one quarter, or one Bitcoin, and they can be interchanged for one another. They can also be divided into smaller parts. For example, a dollar can be divided into four quarters or a hundred pennies. And the divided parts equal the greater amount. So you could have $10,000 and that's 10 $1,000 bills. So now you understand it's very interchangeable. So NFTs exist on the blockchain and they represent a unique ownership in that commodity, piece or product. So NFTs act like a digital certificate of authenticity. Think about how much the market has moved. In 2020, that market was worth 335 million. But just a couple of years before in 2018, it was only worth $40 million. Do you see the upside and the potential in this market? But NFTs contain a distinguishable, unique property that tells you who the owner is and who sold it, basically making them forgery proof in a way, at least for right now. Because they're one of a kind, they have a unique digital signature and you always know who the owner is and who created it and who owns it right now. And you also know the trail of ownership as well. So if someone buys it and sells it to someone else or sells it to someone else, you have that line of custody, if you will, knowing exactly who's had it before you. Pretty unique for even art. And because of that unique digital signature, you always know what you own and it defines your rights to that particular asset. Now, just like anything else, goods or services, it can be bought and sold at any given time. It can be bought for real money, AKA Benjamins, uh, you know, dead presidents, whatever you want to call real money. It could be exchanged for Bitcoin or even other NFTs. You can trade up or down. And because they have a unique certification uh, or a unique fingerprint or token name, basically anything creative. Now, a lot of the attention is really just on paintings right now, but they can be applied to a lot of different creative art forms, such as digital collectibles digital sculptures, digital art forms, video games, all kinds of other assets. And I'm sure we're gonna come out with even more. So the potential is huge. 
So if you're into NFTs and study, you should know about some artists. So there's an artist named Beebles, a name you should know if you're getting into NFTs, but his art form, a uh, piece of art every day, if I'm pronouncing it right, back from 2007, yielded nearly $70 million. And there's another one called Pax Merge that sold for over $90 million and had 30,000 investors investing, a whole bunch of Gen Xers investing in one piece of art. Now think about that. You've got real artwork, real world, artwork like the Salvador Mundi or the Mona Lisa going for hundreds of millions of dollars and you've got new forms of art like NFTs going for nearly the same amount. This is an incredible opportunity. So a couple of things. You never get a physical piece of the art. And so I'm going to answer one more question. Is there a bubble? Should you get into it? What should you do? Really study and know the art form so that you know the value and the upside potential. Just like my advice on everything, start out small, build expertise, and then figure out if it's something that you enjoy investing in. And if you're okay with having a piece of art that's never gonna be on your wall, or maybe you'll put your certificate on the wall, then it's perfectly fine for you. Do not put all your money into NFTs unless you wanna go NSF, which is non-sufficient funds in your bank account. Remember that in investing, you should have many different spokes or many different streams of income coming towards you when you're investing. This is not about exactly what to invest in. I just wanted to introduce you to one more way that you can sharpen your investment skills and also learn to invest in this arena. If you wanna find out more about blockchain and cryptocurrencies, go ahead and hit this video here.